Hey everyone, Max at the microphone again and today I've got some great news about the VAC anti-cheat and the VACnet neural network. How the CS2 developers tricked the entire community, why no one has yet gained access to Overwatch and much more. And while you have time, check out Skins Monkey. Use code GABEN and get up to a $5 bonus, select a few of your current skins, pick a new one in the same price range and exchange your old and ugly CSGO items to something new and shiny from Counter-Strike 2. Use code GABEN and buy skins much cheaper with a 30 plus 5% top up bonus. Skins Monkey, links and my code down below. On April 26th, Counter-Strike 2 received its first major update in a long time. In it, I and many other members of the community found lines of code indicating the start of work on adding Overwatch and improving the VACnet anti-cheat module. At the same time, the developers clearly stated in the update change log that access to Overwatch would be granted to trusted partners or community members, which is kind of a vague statement. However, several days have passed and there is no known case or user who has had access. And if you try to force your demo into Overwatch case review, it turns out that the interface elements look quite raw or are placeholders. In updates after that, lines have appeared here and there hinting that the developers are still working on Overwatch and that it is technically not yet ready for release. This can be seen in particular from the changes to the highlight system and the addition of Overwatch state to the game API. But on April 27th, the day after the update, a small wave of VAC bans occurred and it wasn't just farmers who were banned, as some people in the community claimed. Everyone was banned without any specific reason. There were not that many bans, but still, that's the fact. And for those who were banned, a global cooldown from Overwatch was displayed in the main menu. The question appears, how did people get banned by Overwatch if it is not yet active? Moreover, in some cases, this ban is not even displayed in the profile and account status. Look, we go to Steam settings, look at the account status and there is no ban. We go into the game, there is a blue header, hovering over which it is quite clearly stated that the account is banned by Overwatch. We update the account status again and there is no ban. At the same time a red banner appeared on some accounts stating that it was a community ban on Steam, not Counter-Strike. A couple more days passed and a complete massacre started. Anti-cheat banned the entire lobbies of people. In some cases, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 or even 10 accounts in the same match were banned in a matter of seconds. Previously, before a ban, a report from a real player in the same match had to be initiated against the bad actor. But now this happens automatically in real time. And all of these people have an Overwatch ban that is not displayed in their profile. So what's really going on? I talked to different people in the community, including cheat makers, and came to a few conclusions. These bans are not related to any specific cheats. Only those accounts that were used for rage functions such as aim, bunny hop, rapid fire and no spread were affected regardless of the cheat provider. Players who use non-obvious cheats like wall or radar hack and a little bit of aim assist were generally left untouched. This gives a clear understanding that the detection happens from the server side, not the client side. The first wave of bans apparently was a test run. The developers made sure there were no false positives and turned on the meat grinder at full power. The bans also affected those accounts where the last games were played before the Overwatch update. So it has nothing to do with it and apparently the developers pulled the wool over our eyes by adding this line to the change log. Hidden bans don't give us a clear picture and scale of the events and we have to rely on our own data. Only those who played with cheats in premier game mode were banned. And those who played in competitive matchmaking haven't been affected much yet. The world leaderboard which was full of cheaters really bothered the developers so they took on the most obvious problems first. This is proved by the subsequent cleaning of the top. In none of the cases the new text which says that the VACnet anti-cheat neural network has noticed suspicious behavior and stopped the match was not displayed in the game chat. And the VAClave itself which is designed to stop matches after one of the cheaters is banned does not work. This may indicate that the main protective barriers are still not fully activated and the current wave is rolling out in semi-automatic mode, which is being carefully monitored. But this does not negate the fact that the developers are actively collecting as much data as possible to feed it to the neural network for retraining. 
Along with the latest update, the Faced, Anti-Cheat and some invasive whitelisted programs started crashing the game on launch, as they technically also inject third-party code or read memory from the game client. Frankly speaking, it's too early to celebrate. Fight against cheaters is a cat and mouse game. Today devs turned on active server-side checking and tomorrow it will be bypassed. The fight must be complex. To achieve a significant result, the developers need to use dozens of systems working in parallel or together with each other. This cannot be done in a day or a week, especially considering the fact that the game itself needs to be improved. And VAC waves are important even small ones. It is impossible to ban all cheaters, but it's important to set small precedents so they don't feel invincible and think what if I get banned next time. We are waiting for the first full results in the next couple of weeks, but it's already funny to watch the reaction of the poor guys on the forums or streamers who get banned live. I would also like to talk about the new trend of photorealistic maps. Thanks to the capabilities and lack of limitations of the Source 2 engine, users have started to import 3D objects scanned using photogrammetry. And some, like Lily, even went so far as to buy assets on Kixel and make remakes of old maps using new technologies. If you don't look too closely, the maps look incredibly realistic, especially considering the graphics upgrade of the new engine. And I sincerely hope that this is what the future of maps will be, at least from the community. Speaking of maps, many people were outraged that instead of Mirage or Vertigo, the developers decided to remove Overpass, despite the fact that they put a lot of effort into a full fledged remake of the map. It's no secret that Valve very often relies on statistics, not community complaints. And it shows that Mirage, Inferno and Vertigo are in the top 3 maps by popularity. While Overpass, which seemed to be such an old and beloved map, was played by slightly more people than Anubis. That is only 10%. Leave a wave emoji if you watched this far and check out the previous video where I talk more about the VAC anti-cheat updates. Until next time.